proudly we hail. Hello from Hollywood, this is C.P. McGregor speaking, and welcoming you to another broadcast of Proudly We Hail, a program of your War Department. Through the courtesy of the Hollywood Coordinating Committee, we present Harold Gildersleeve Perry as the star of our show titled Lily Packs a Wallop, written by Rich Hall with music by Eddie Skrivanek. <laughs> Chester Lily White, who lived very quietly with his elderly housekeeper, Mrs. Edwards, wasn't the kind of a fellow you'd want to play tackle on your football team. Now, Chester had two obsessions, his flowers and his next-door neighbor, Mr. Dunkel. Both he'd like to see planted underground. Mr. Dunkel, six feet under. Mr. Dunkel shared billing with the ham and eggs in the conversation that morning at breakfast. Mmm, Mrs. Edwards? These muffins are delicious this morning. Well, now, I'm glad you like them. You feel good, don't you, Mr. Lillywhite? Good. Perfect. Why, I'm as chipper as a jaybird. You always feel good when Mr. Dunkel goes away on his vacation. Oh, please, Mrs. Edwards, don't mention Dunkel. I only think of him when I buy my insect spray. Oh, it's true, though. That man is so edgy and, and so muscular. And I had to plant my ranunculus right by his fence. And ranunculus require so much water. You'd better warn the new gardener not to get water on Mr. Dunkel's fence. Yes, uh, the new gardener? Well, don't you remember? The employment agency is sending a gardener out today. Oh, yes, so they are, so they are. Well, we won't have to worry about Dunkel's fence. Not for quite a while. Since Dunkel's been gone, I've watered those ranunculus to my heart's content. <laughs> why, his old fence is dripping with water at this very moment. I don't see why Mr. Dunkel has to make so much trouble. But I do think you should stand up to him more. Mrs. Edwards, you're absolutely right. And when he comes back, I'm going to be very firm with him. Well, you always say that when he's on his vacation. This time, I've made up my mind. Ah, but hasn't it been wonderful having Dunkel away? Hasn't it been wonderful... Lily White! Lily White! That's me. Oh, dear. He's back. Lily White, turn that bratted water off. Oh, dear, the water all over his fence. Uh, excuse me, Mrs. Edwards. <laughs> Don't forget to be firm with him. Oh, definitely. Uh, uh, nice to have you back, Mr. Dunkel. Come over here, Lily White. Uh, yes. Uh, well, Mr. Dunkel, did you enjoy your vacation? Lily White, I've got a good notion to push your nose right back between your ears. Now, now, Mr. Dunkel, let's not resort to violence. I pay $118.60 to get this fence painted. I go away on my vacation, I come back, and what do I find? Yes, what does he find? Spots. Spots all over it. Spots. Now, now, Mr. Dunkel, remember, I have to water my ranunculus. You do, huh? Now listen, Lily White. <laughs> You're crumpling my tie, Mr. Dunkel. I'll crumple something else next time. If you have to water your ranunculus, water them. Use anything. Use an eyedropper. But don't sputter my fence. Uh, yes, Mr. Dunkel. And what's more, you better get a nice new scrub brush. Scrub brush, yes, Mr. Dunkel. And clean every one of those spots off my fence. Spot. Yes, Mr. Dunkel. And if this ever happens again... Oh, it, it won't, Mr. Dunkel. <laughs> no. And now may I have my necktie back again? And my neck? Thank you. Oh, it's certainly nice to have you back home again. Well, Mr. Lily White. Were you firm with Mr. Dunkel? Did you stand up for your rights? Oh, yes, Mrs. Edwards, I most certainly did. By the way, do we have a nice new scrub brush? Why, yes. Uh, would you mind getting it out? He's making you clean his fence again. Making me? Not at all. I simply offered to do it as a gesture of good neighbor policy. Well, all right, but I wish I were ten years younger. I'd take care of Mr. Dunkel. I've hit me husband, rest his soul, for less. Oh, the new gardener is here in the living room. In the living room? Oh, oh dear. Oh, thank you. That's excellent. Uh, I'll go talk to him. Oh, dear. Such a day. Uh, well, my good man? Uh, greetings, Mr. Lily White. Moran's the name. Butch Moran. Oh, I'm glad to know you, Mr. Moran. Likewise, I'm sure. Uh, the uh, employment agency sent you up? That's right. And I heard every word. Uh, at the employment agency? Of the slight altercation you had with the guy next door. Oh, oh, oh that was nothing. <laughs> 
I'm disappointed, Mr. Lillywhite. Disappointed. You are? Sure, you should have popped him right on his keister. Oh, please, Mr. Moran, please. One must never resort to such mundane things as physical combat. One mustn't? One must not. But it's so gratifying to bounce one's fist off the chin of a cat or a bully. <laughs> Definitely, Mr. Moran, you're so right. If I only could. But he's so large. He played fullback on his college team. The bigger they come, Mr. Lillywhite, the harder they fall. That's what I keep thinking. Every time I look at those hams, that Dunkel has fists. Well, pardon me for prying into your personal affairs. Quite all right, Mr. Moran, quite all right. Uh, now you're here to apply for the job of gardener? Have you had any experience? Well, Mr. Lillywhite, I am taking up horticulture in night school. I have already learned the life cycles of the Asted, the Hydrangea, the Hollyhock, and the Marigold. My next lesson is on the petunia. Oh, that's excellent. I love petunias. Uh, but now, what about your practical experience with flowers? Uh, well, I personally placed a wreath of 12 dozen roses on the beer of me good friend Lippy McGrew when he was bumped off. Oh, no, Mr. Moran. What I mean is, what practical experience have you had with gardening? You got me, Mr. Lillywhite. I was born and raised in Brooklyn, but we didn't even have a tree. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Moran. I have quite a large garden here. I need a more experienced man. Of course, I could take care of that neighbor of yours permanently if you was to hire me. Uh, the most pleasant thought of the day, of any day. Uh, but no, Mr. Moran, the dispute is between Dunkel and myself. Well, why not let me coach you then? Uh, 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 coach me? Sure, get you in trim, give you a little footwork, a little of that one-two stuff. Why, you'll be spitting right in his eye. How dreadful. I will? Sure. I fought some of the best boys in me class. Didn't you ever read the Police Gazette? Oh, no, I can't stand pink paper. But you've given me a thought. How long would it take you, Mr. Moran, to prepare me, uh, shall we say, for combat? Well, now you're putting me on the spot. Look at what I got to work with. But I know I can do it, Mr. Lillywhite. I know it. Very good, Mr. Moran. <laughs> you're hired. Uh, gee, thanks. Say, I'm just like Luther Burbank developing a grapefruit. And I'm starting with a lemon, too. Uh-huh. <laughs> We pause briefly from our story, The Lily Packs a Wallop, starring Harold Gildersleeve Perry, to bring you an important message from your War Department. Thirty years ago, very few men could afford college training. Today, all young men can obtain college education at government expense by joining the regular army. The educational provisions of the GI Bill of Rights still apply. Any man who serves 90 days in the new regular army, at least one day of which is previous to the official termination of the war, is eligible for one year free schooling. In addition, he is entitled to 30 days education for every month served before the termination up to a maximum of 48 months of schooling. Here is an opportunity for the young man of today that his father never had. While accruing his education credits, the regular army soldier is working at a responsible high-paid job, learning a trade or scientific skill. He can also be preparing for higher education by taking off-duty or correspondence courses of his choice. Ask today at your nearest Army recruiting station about the educational opportunities in the new regular Army. They'll be glad to explain at no obligation to you. Act two of The Lily Packs a Wallop, starring Harold Gildersleeve Perry as Chester Lillywhite. Mr. Dunkel's fence has been scrubbed clean, but his comeuppance is in the making. Chester is proving a willing student, and Butch Moran is teaching him all he knows. A basement room has been converted into a gymnasium, and Chester, decked out in long underwear, is at the moment getting his daily instruction. Well, Butch, am I progressing? Oh, immensely, Mr. Lillywhite. You know, when I first seen you in them long johns, I thought to myself, here is the before of the before. But now you see, your muscles are hardening up. You're getting to look almost like the after. Dunkel better order a large bottle of liniment. Well, I won't damage him too much. A couple of gallons ought to bring him around. Now, let's get back to where we was. Uh, the one, two. Here, now, come on, try it on me. Uh, okay. One, two. That's right. One, two. That's it. Now you're getting some sock into it. Now watch out. I'm coming back at you. Oh... Darn it, why did I do that? Oh, dear, but 
much, Moran. What have you done to Mr. Lily White? I just had to let one go for old time's sake. <laughs> Uh, Butch, where are you? Uh, come in, Mr. Lily White. Where Thomas. have you been, my good man? I'm supposed to have my boxing lesson. I was out with the flowers. You know, Mr. Lily White, there's something very dear about flowers. Something kind of poetic. Well, let's forget the flowers. But I'm your gardener. Oh, besides, you're all set to go. You're ready. I am? Really? Sure. And guess what? Dunkel's next door in the backyard right now. And the hose is by the fence. All you gotta do is turn it on. Oh, uh, you, uh, you're sure that he's home? No, oh, he's home. And the setting is perfect. Come, me gladiator. We proceed to turn on the faucet. Uh, Butch, you're sure that I'm prepared for this? Oh, positive. Uh, wish I thought so. Uh, courage. Oh, there he is. Turn the hose on and remember the one, too. And what I told you to tell him. If you get him mad enough, he'll be a pushover. Billy White, turn off that hose. Oh, your old grandfather's beard. What's that? Uh, uh, I meant your father's mustache. Hey, are you getting smart with me? I hope so. Well, I'll come over there. Well, you do, and they'll have to carry you back. Why, you wait till I get there. Yeah, I most certainly will. Well, I'll break every bone in your body. <laughs> you asked for this, Dunkle. One, two. <laughs> A perfect three-point landing. Get up from that ground, Dunkle. I'll take you apart and put you back together. Hey, you've been practicing. Certainly. Get up. You don't have to get tough about it, Mr. Lily White. There. Now, blow. I don't have a handkerchief. It, not your nose. I mean blow. Uh, scram. Isn't that right, Butch? All right, Mr. Lily White. You don't have to resort to violence. And don't you give me any more trouble, or I'll push your nose right back between your ears. Well, you uh, kind of polished him off all right, Mr. Lily White. <laughs> Didn't I, though? He was a cinch. Sucker for a left. Uh, but you don't seem very happy about this, Butch. Happy? I'm miserable. But my good man, why? Look at what you went and done. You trampled all my beautiful ranunculus. <laughs> this is C.P. McGregor speaking. I hope you've enjoyed our proudly we hailed story starring Harold Gildersleeve Perry. Before leaving you, Don Forbes has an important message for all of us. Is the cold getting you down these days? If it is, be thankful you're not with Task Force Williwa, now maneuvering in the frigid climate of Alaska. Task Force Williwa, the United States Army Ground Forces Experimental Unit, is based at Adak, Alaska. An average daily temperature of 40 degrees below zero is not unusual. Here, studies are being made to learn which types of food are most suitable for top-of-the-world conditions. Army scientists with this group are measuring the daily number of calories required for heavy exertion and maintenance of body heat. Clothing, footwear, gloves, tentage, and cooking utensils are being tested to provide maximum utility against the wintry blasts. As a result of these Army experiments, living for everyone during the cold winter months is expected to be made immeasurably more comfortable. Testing under severe Arctic conditions is just one phase of the new regular Army program of research and development. In the fields of atomics, electronics, aviation, engineering, and many more, Army technicians are daily making new experiments and discoveries. In medicine, two Army-developed devices were used last summer during an infantile paralysis epidemic. One was a breathing device which kept the patient alive despite the closing of his larynx. The other was the oximeter, by means of which the doctor can determine the length of periods which the patient can be taken from the respirator and when he can be removed permanently. Yes, your new regular army is a scientific organization. In the months to come, many men will have earned the right to discharge. High caliber replacements at the rate of 40,000 a month must be found for them. Men who are capable of absorbing the technical training necessary to carry on the scientific work of the army. Here is an opportunity for a worthwhile career in an organization which serves mankind in war and in peace. Any ambitious young man between 18 and 34 17 with parents' consent, who can qualify, is eligible. Ask at your nearest Army recruiting station today about a career in our new technically trained regular Army. Thank you, Harold Gildersleeve Perry, for a wonderful performance. Proudly We Hail will come to you again next week. Listen in. Listen <laughs> in.